All right, I think I'm about done with this driver. Um, I have to kind of double check it, but this is how I'm going to do it. This is, uh, once again, this is pretty much uh, Steve Ward's DR SSTC driver with OCD. Um, what I ended up doing was getting these uh, 220 package 14 amp drivers. They've actually got enables on them, but what I did was I got all of the same non-invertings. Uh, so again, this time I'm just switching those with a couple of, uh, with one inverting and one non-inverting gate driver, just so I don't really have to change the circuit up too much. Uh, but the plan there is I'm going to use uh, some higher power dedicated supply, something like this maybe, at uh, you know, about 18 volts, and that's going to power the uh, gate drivers at about 18 UCCs can't really go that high, so those are being powered off the 15 volt rail. So it's got 15 volt, 5 volt, you know, 15 for the gate drivers and the uh, OCD, and the 5 volt for uh, the Schmidt trigger and the uh, flip flop. Problem is, womp womp, it's real messy uh, with this type of setup, but whatever. Um, all I really got to do is power test it um you know double check all the connections again and then power test it and then i gotta hook everything up so this is going to be the uh gate drive transformer this is a t37 core i just bought a bunch of these a while back and they seem to work out pretty good for gate drive transformers or um, feedback transformers i need another one for ocd right here uh, this is going to be feedback and um uh, and I have enable input right here. So hopefully that'll work out. Um, last time when I tried to use a setup like this, it wasn't quite working that well without uh, PLL feedback. So I'm going to try it again. Uh, you know, using that full bridge right there, using a couple half bridge bricks and uh, see how that goes. Basically, I'm still going to run uh, 24 volt in. So it's just going to be 24 volt main control power. That's going to jump over to the uh, driver over here or 24 into here and then I'm just using these two linears to get 15 and 5 and then likewise the 24 is going to jump over through the uh, regulator to give me the 18 in for the gate drive all right so I'm gonna put 24 volts on this guy I got a uh, I have this interrupter going to it and uh, I'm gonna have a some probes just on one of the secondaries here. So first cut that on, so nothing blows up, so that's good. But I'm not getting any output from what I can tell. So I've either got something wired wrong or, all right, so it wasn't actually the uh, enables like I thought. Well, that might've been part of it, but uh. I just had my uh, interrupter <laughs> wiring uh, wired up wrong, basically. So now I'm just going to cut the interrupter on with power. I'm just going to scope the uh, one of the secondaries. I'm just looking for that interrupter pulse, basically. And there it is. So that seems to be, uh, you know, at least so far working out. I got 15 over here with the UCCs, but then I'm driving these at whatever I want, which is right now about 18. The only other uh, difference here is, is, yeah, I'm coming through this opto right here. Otherwise, the only other change is just using these, you know, beefier gate drivers. So, yeah, it looks like it'll work. So I just need to add another, I uh, need to add the feedback uh, transformer, a CT transformer, which um, I don't know, I'll probably just steal from like another coil and uh, try to get this. Thing running all right so when it comes to the bridge part obviously I've got to hook my uh, gate wires up here um, but you know what's kind of cool about these bricks is if you never used these brick modules you can see how they're laid out you got C2 E1 E2 and C1 so this is basically two switches in a half bridge where this is the bottom this is the top and this is where the emitter and the drain or collector of uh, both of them meet, right? So basically, uh, that means if you take two of these, 
uh, then you're going to have two half bridges and you just put them together to make a full bridge right the way you put them together is just simple you tie the rails together right so you got e2 and c1 so you just tie your negatives together so you can just place them side by side and just boom um, you know run a bar right across that'll be your negative do the same thing here boom right across for the uh, positive then boom uh, this terminal here c2e1 and then the other c2e1 are going to be your uh, more or less your primary connection right so that's pretty cool so basically when it comes to switching them it's like all right well how do you uh, switch these how do you get the phasing right well so basically this will be the equivalent circuit uh, schematic this particular one uh, you can see they've, they've even got little zeners there but uh, you can see half bridge here. So basically, um, you know, obviously I wouldn't want both of these to be to share the same phasing, right? Because, you know, then you're just going to go poop, power just going to go uh, straight through the ground, right? So if I've got another brick right next to this one um, where, you know, they're tied together here at uh, C1, they're tied together here at E2, um, you know, then I'd want this one to share the same phasing as this other one over here all right and then likewise this one over here is going to share the same phasing as this one over here so uh, that's basically just how i'd have to you know make sure i hook up, hook up the gates on here right but um otherwise yeah pretty nifty to uh use bricks like that you get a fairly low inductance layout uh which makes it real simple you know first time i've ever built one of these but um yeah you know just kind of liking how that works out right 